This is Vidlex 2, How to Meditate Like the Saints. Let's begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Vidlex 2. Vidlex is a portmanteau of Video Lexio Divina. What I'm going to be teaching you on this series is learning divine reading of the Bible in a Catholic way. And Vidlex 2 here is probably the most important for all of you, because what we're going to look at is the two different ways of meditation. The way without imagination of St. Bruno, and the way of greatly using your imagination, the way of St. Teresa of Avila and St. Ignatius of Loyola. Now both of these are equally good ways to pray. Why don't we jump right in with the way of St. Bruno? I suggest a book called Praying Scripture for a Change by Dr. Tim Gray if you want to learn the fullness of this method. But what I'm going to give you is the way of St. Bruno and the way of St. Teresa of Avila looking at Matthew chapter 8 just as a launching point for what we're going to do in all of these future 10-minute meditations on this series. We'll go through first through Matthew's Gospel, then Mark's, then Luke's, then John's. This will take several years because we're only going to be doing 10 minutes a day, and then I'm going to ask you to bring this to prayer for 10 minutes a day. What you're going to find is some of your brains like to really approach the Bible only like looking at the Greek words, perhaps, without a lot of the sights, tastes, smells, feelings of first century Palestine. Other people who like to use their imagination, and this is equally valid, are going to want to place themselves in the scene of the gospel, and you want to set up everything that you feel, sense, smell, taste, everything in first century Palestine. Again, both the way of St. Bruno and St. Teresa of Avila are equally good. And every day as we go through the gospel, we're only going to do about a quarter of the gospel a day. I'm going to give you about five minutes on the non-imaginative way just to look at some of the cool connections in the Greek so that you can bring that to prayer after that if you just like to do it that way. And I'm also going to set up, say, the imagination of what it would be like to actually be there. But you're going to do most of the work on that as you bring that to hopefully 15 minutes of prayer. As I said on the uh, earlier one, if you don't bring this to prayer, I'm never going to know. I think you'll still get a decent Bible study out of this if you tune into this three times a week. And by the way, we also have a catechism series called CPX. Tune into that three times a week too if you want. I think you'll get a lot of uh, information on that if you do that. But you're going to really benefit a lot better if you actually bring what I teach you here to 15 minutes of prayer. Let's take a look at the way of Lexio Divina of St. Bruno, also called the apophatic way of prayer. All sounds complex, but it's pretty easy. First step is Lexio. This is careful study. This is where we don't pick a whole chapter of the gospel, but only a half or possibly even a quarter of a chapter of the gospel. We're going to hone in on this, and many days I'll just give you some of the Greek so you can see some of these cool connections. Step number two is Meditatio, which, as you might guess, is meditation. St. Bruno asks us to look at the hidden treasure. We'll give you one treasure day in the quarter of a chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel that we cover. Number three is oratio. This means drive away the evil and keep the good, as St. Bruno says. All this means is try to focus, and this is really hard. So when you bring this to prayer, focus on just a few words, with your phone off, of course, and let the Holy Spirit fill you with his peace. Four is contemplatio. St. Bruno calls this the gaze of love. Now this is rare. This is a gift that God only gives us on rare occasions. So we're going to skip this and look at number five. Number five is operatio, which is where we get the word operation. And it's just what to do. These are the resolutions that you take away from your meditation time. Let's try to apply this to Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. And when Jesus got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even winds and sea obey him? Okay, 
Let's try that first step. The first step again is Lexio, careful study. One thing I might show you on this, and I don't know where we're going to get once we get to Matthew 8 in a few months, but one thing just looking ahead that I noticed, I'll put the Greek up here. The Greek says, Kai ido seismos megas egenato ente thalase. What that actually says, if you look at those words seismos, that's where we get the word seismograph, so it's actually earthquake in Greek. Megas is where we get big, or mega. So it actually says there was a mega earthquake under the sea. Did you ever know that? Now that might be idiomatic for storm in Aramaic or Greek, but it shows why these apostles were so terrified at that. Okay, maybe that's a little bit too sensationalistic in there and you want to not focus on the mega seismos. Maybe you pick, then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea and there was a great calm. Let's apply step number two and three to that. Again, remember step two is meditation, the hidden treasure. Now, why is it a treasure that Christ would rebuke the winds and the sea? Because we learn from Genesis 1 that only God has power over the sea. Genesis 1, 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. I realize that was before Adam and Eve. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now realize, with Peter and the apostles, Christ shows that same power. And what does it bring to their lives? Great calm. The Greek there is galene megale. There's that mega word again, the same as English. Galene is calmness or stillness. So a big part of step two in this way of St. Bruno is to have the courage in a whole passage of the Bible to just focus on about five words or less. Those two words, great calm, might be enough to bring to your 15 minutes of prayer. Because the amazing thing about meditation is that it affects in the soul what it symbolizes in the words. Here, a great calm. But we have to fight for it. And that's step three, oratio, which St. Bruno said, again, was to drive away the evil and keep the good. Here's a very practical tip for that. Set your alarm for 15 minutes on your meditation and never break it. Can you sit with those two words, great calm, for 15 minutes with your phone off? It's amazingly difficult, but amazingly rewarding. So please, please, please try it. And the effect is, as I said, a great calm in the soul. And occasionally, don't expect this every time, God will bring you to the next point, which is contemplation. And that's a little taste of heaven that some of you will get if you persevere in this way of prayer. This is why I'm doing this series, um, to bring us into union with God. Let's look at the imaginative way of prayer of St. Teresa of Avila, and St. Ignatius of Loyola. The book I'm going to suggest if you want to go deeper into this way is called Conversation with Christ. Now, if you look on Amazon, you're going to see a dozen different books called Conversation with Christ. This is the one by Father Rohrbach. He's a Carmelite priest. So if you go to Amazon, look for Conversation with Christ by Father Peter Thomas Rohrbach. What I'm going to give you today is just the five steps that he distills out of her method which isn't actually that complex, but we're going to distill it even in a more simple way so that you can see how to use all five senses in your imagination. Basically, if we're generous in the physical side of using all five senses in our imagination, God will be generous in the spiritual side. Now, for those of you who like to meditate this way, you will feel very childlike. Remember how last time I gave you the example of coming to Elizabeth's door and Maybe there's, uh, you smell the challah bread that she's making, and maybe you feel the grass as you walk up to the front, and maybe there's a fountain. Does she have a big yellow house? You are actually asked to set all of this up when you are in one of these scenes of the mental prayer. But this isn't only the way of St. Teresa of Avila, but it's also the way of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Totally be free and use your imagination as long as it's holy. Again, you might feel childlike in that feeling in the Sea of Galilee, having the Sea of Galilee splash against your face uh, as you picture yourself as an apostle on the boat with Jesus one day. But childlike is good. Our Lord said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And again, like I said last time, St. Ignatius of Loyola had over 100,000 men, if I remember the numbers correctly, by the end of the 16th century go through the spiritual exercises. They weren't all under him, but the, the early Jesuits had reached so many people by the, end, by the year 1600 that I think close to 100,000 men had gone through the spiritual exercises, which are heavily based in this discursive way of mental prayer. 
We use big words like discursive way of mental prayer, but really it's using your imagination very generously by placing yourself right there in the gospel. Let's look at the five steps that St. Teresa of Avila and Father Peter Rohrbach the Carmelite give us. Number one is preparation. One is preparation. This is pause momentarily and place yourself before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament or as God resides in the soul, if you're in sanctifying grace. A good beginning, says Father Peter, is half the battle. Number two is selection of the material. Now, thankfully, I'm going to do this for you because if you tune into this three times a week, it's going to be very easy because we're going to all be doing it together on this YouTube channel. Now, the off days, I might suggest you meditate on the passion of Jesus. This is the, the number one thing that the saints say you can meditate on. Place yourself in the passion. But as we're going to go through Matthew's gospel, a quarter or a half a chapter at a time, the selection of the material will be very easy for you on the Sundays, the Tuesdays, and the Thursdays that, Thursday that you meditate. This is why it's important to take the little I give you and let God build very big on that in your own 15 minutes a day. I guess you can use what I give you as a Bible study on the go if you just want to listen on the podcast every day without actually praying. But again, you'll get a lot more if you can promise yourself, not me. I wouldn't even say make a promise to God because then you feel bad if you break a vow to him. Promise yourself 15 minutes of meditation a day. Anyway, I'll pick the material, and it will first be Matthew chapter 1, as we'll jump into in the next couple of vidlexes. But let's stick with this. Number three is the consideration. This is the complex part of the imagination that really isn't that complex if you're good at using your imagination. Placing yourself first century Palestine. And this is what Father Peter, and especially St. Teresa of Avila, ask us to ask. Who is here in this scene? What is he doing? Talking especially about Christ. What is Christ doing? Why is Christ doing that? What does it mean to me? Number four is the conversation. The book Conversation with Christ says, quote, The soul begins to talk slowly to Christ, telling him of its love for him, its desire to serve him, its willingness to do anything for him. He adores Christ in the scene of the day's meditation. He expresses his love for him, thanks him for past gifts, petitions him for new favors in the future. And number five is the conclusion. This is just where our Lord should be thanked, or you can come up with resolutions. Okay, let's try that with this Matthew chapter 8. I'll read it again to you. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Okay, let's apply the way of St. Teresa of Avila and St. Ignatius of Loyola to this. I want you to imagine yourself in that boat, swamped with waves. Now again, I know this sounds childish, but this is how Teresa of Avila taught her nuns and Ignatius taught his men, mostly laymen, how to pray. What does that wind feel like against your face in that boat in the Sea of Galilee? There's a huge storm. What does the sea taste like? How loud is the storm? Can Jesus even hear you when you try to wake him? Is the wind that loud? Imagine how afraid you are as your boat is about to sink. Feel the water now engulfing your ankles. You shake Jesus' shoulder. What does that garment made of by Mary feel like in your hand? Is it coarse? Is it soft? I don't know the answer. Really, if you're generous in picturing these physical things, God will be generous in the spiritual things, even probably before your 15 minutes of meditation ends. So you're in this boat, and then Jesus awakes. What is it like to look in the eyes of the Son of God as a storm thrashes about you? This is really what you picture. Look in those eyes. Are they blue? Are they brown? You say, save us, Lord, we are perishing. And Jesus looks you right in the eyes with love pure love and says, why are you afraid, O you of little faith? How does the storm lead to a great calm at this point? Do you feel the sun shine on your face? Or maybe it's still cloudy as the storm dissipates. This is up to you in there. Now, as Protestant as it sounds, name that storm in your life for Jesus and tell him what it is. And I know this sounds like cheap emotional Protestant tricks, but number four, according to St. Teresa of Avila, is the conversation. The soul begins to talk slowly to Christ, telling him of its love for him, its desire to serve him, its willingness to do anything for him. He adores Christ in the scene of the day's meditation. He expresses his love for him, 
thanks him for past gifts, petitions him for new favors in the future. So notice this isn't only complaining about our life, but telling us that despite these storms, we are still going to love him and serve him. Tell Jesus how thankful you are, what did it mean that he calmed that storm, and how you will trust him in the future. So if you like this way of prayer, I'm happy, but realize it's up to you to turn your phone off, just like the first way of prayer, after our 10-minute lesson so you can enter into 15 minutes of your own meditation. I suppose you could use this series just as a Bible study, as I said before, on the go without meditation and no one will find out. But I think you'll get a lot more from this if you bring all of these videos, these 10 minutes a day times three times a week, to your own prayer. Again, your imagination is being right there in the Gospels with Jesus, with St. Teresa of Avila and St. Ignatius of Loyola. But either way, just like St. Bruno, you've got to fight those distractions. So if you succeed in the way of St. Bruno or St. Teresa of Avila, sometimes God will give you contemplation, which no man can give himself. Uh, but this is a gift that's not only feasible, but actually something God wants to give you if you persevere in this way of prayer. St. John Vianney said, flies don't land on boiling water. What he meant by this is that if your heart and mind is on fire with Christ, flies are going to be loath to land on it. He means demons tempting you. This is why the saints say mental prayer is the number one way to avoid sin. So let's just recap. This is VLX2 teaching you how to pray. We can't do this method on our first meditation on VLX number three next time because it's the genealogy of Jesus, Matthew 1. But tune in for a really cool study on that genealogy according to the church fathers. And that will be our launching point to VLX 4, which will be our jump into the deep end, the birth of Jesus, the second half of Matthew 1. I'll teach you the way of St. Bruno and St. Teresa of Avila in just 10 minutes on that one. And if you want, you can bring that to prayer. You're probably subscribed on Census Fidelium, so please subscribe to Padre Peregrino on either YouTube or Apple Podcasts in case Steve and I decide to discontinue the series on Census Fidelium. Both channels will have a playlist for both of my new series called VLX and CPX, so please go to find those playlists if you're watching this on YouTube. Finally, I should let you know that I'm going to be mostly pulling New Testament quotes from the English Standard Version Catholic Edition and or the Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. I know most traditionalists out there would prefer the Dewey Rhymes, but it's just way too antiquated for the incarnational prayer that I'm going to be teaching you. In discursive mental prayer, you really have to place yourself in Christ's humanity and meditation for him to raise you to his divinity and contemplation. And to meet him in his humanity, we actually have to understand what's being said. And too many traditionalists I talk to have no idea what's being said in the Dewey Rhymes. So we're going to use a more modern translation, but I'm going to repeatedly go back to the Greek and the Latin so you know I'm not making stuff up. And so that you know, according to the way of St. Bruno, how beautiful these connections are. Last reminder, this will be a fun and informative Bible study if you don't bring this stuff to prayer, but it will bring you a thousand times closer to God if you bring what I'm teaching you to just 15 minutes of prayer on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And on the off days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you might wish to try this way of prayer on the passion of our Lord Jesus. So finally, please go subscribe on YouTube to either Padre Peregrino or Census Fidelium, or if you listen on the go, just subscribe to the podcast called Padre Peregrino on either Apple Podcasts, that's that purple app, or the free app on Android called CastBox. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you for the genealogy of Jesus in VLX3 on the next one, where we learn some very valuable things on the history of St. Matthew's Gospel, which will constitute all of 2020 in our meditations for the rest of the year. So please tune in to VLX3, the genealogy, and VLX456 and onwards, for meditation on the rest of St. Matthew's Gospel. God bless you.